Ringside Rapid Fire is brought to you by LostLegendsTV.com, the place where lost legends live. It's Harold Numberman here with the Ringside Rapid Fire rule. The rules are under the authority of the Unified Associations of Boxing Commissions. Just kidding. Twelve rounds of questions, three knockdown rules in effect. Truculation and truculence are not only legal, they are expected. You can't thumb your opponent's eyes, but you can thumb your nose at the questions. All participants will donate side memorabilia for an online auction. All proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society. Good luck, you're gonna need it. Okay, Jim! We're here with Lee Groves. Lee, tell us a little bit about uh, the book that you're selling here. Well, it's called Tales from the Vault. The Vault is my boxing video collection, uh, which numbers about 25,000 fights. And from that, I picked 100 fights that have all the elements of the great fights of the past, but are sort of under the radar. They're the kind of fights that when mentioned, they go, oh yeah, that was a great fight. Why didn't I think of that? So I uh, have them, uh, 10 chapters, 10 fights per chapter and uh, it was based on the type of fights that they were. Like I have a chapter just on grudge fights, I have uh, a sudden and violent endings, a, a chapter just on heavyweights, a chapter on bantamweights and below. Uh, there, there seems to be something for everyone. And not only do I tell the story of the fights uh, in story form, but I also, uh, I also ran the punch numbers on them. In, in, in 78 of the 100 fights in this book, either predated CompuBox existence or, uh, or uh, they weren't there at ringside at the time. So, I, so many of the numbers that you will see in the book are going to be presented for the first time. So you sat there at home and counted the punches. Amen. Yes. You are a freak and I think I love you. Okay. <laughs> If you think you know what you're talking about, then you're going to participate in Ringside Rapid Fire Trivia? I'm going to give it my best. Lovely. Okay, like we got some trickeration and truculence happening here, combined with trivia for Lee, because he's the guy that we need to stump. Okay, round number one. Okay. If you're a boxing fan, in what Canadian city are you likely to get a booty call? Probably Montreal. That is correct. Crowd goes crazy. Well-known Montreal resident Matthew Hilton was the IBF junior middleweight champ. Who did he win the title from? Buster Drake. Absolutely well done. He's doing well. Name the junior middleweight who became champ three times despite being terrible. Uh, Terry Norris. Correct. He likes the trickeration and truculence here. Uh, what boxer was said to be involved in the fixing of the World Series in 1919? That's... Abe Oh my goodness gracious. We're in trouble here, friends. Two middleweights got into an improbable scrap after their uh, New York encounter and it, uh, colossal tilt in 1925. This is just going to be too easy for you, Lee. Oh my god. Oh, uh, Harry Grab, Mickey Walker. Let's just... Who won, who won against the two? Between the two? Uh, well... It depends on who you ask. <laughs> good, good question. Good answer. Okay, Greb died while having minor surgery. Uh, and the fighter that beat him for the title died having the exact same surgery by the very same surgeon. Who was that boxer? Tiger Flowers. Uh, Follow-up question. What is the name of the doctor that performed the uh, operation? Now you're getting silly. I, <laughs> I am extremely silly. Uh, I don't know the name of the doctor. And the referee comes in for the first standing eight count. And Lee Gross is wobble. The answer is Gustavo Just. Ah, what do you know? You learn something every day. There you go. Okay, Howard Cosell once told one fighter that he was being awful truculent. Who was the fighter that was being truculent? Muhammad Ali. These are way too easy for you. Okay, well, this is a tough one. Who was the only champ to win and lose his title um, by guys nicknamed Battling? Oh, wow. Uh, is he battling? Ad Wokast? Uh, uh, referee comes in. Second standing eight count. Nice try. The actual answer is George Carpentier. He won from battling Levinsky and lost to battling Siki. Ah. Uh, okay. All right. Round number nine. What is the first fight to ever be broadcast nationally on radio? Oh. I know the main event. I don't know the first fight. It was uh, Dempsey and Carpentier. He knows the main event, but doesn't know the undercard. This guy needs to go back and do some homework. Good work, good work. We'll, uh, we'll allow you to go on to round 10. Okay, round 10. Carpentier fought both Tunney and Dempsey. Which fight lasted longer? Uh, Tunney and Dempsey, uh, Tunney. Yeah, Tunney fight, yes. Right, yep, yeah. unanimous discard. No, he stopped him in the 15th. Yeah. Okay, um, who 
was Joe Lewis's last knockout? Joe Lewis's last knockout. Uh... Stop the fight! Stop it! Ah, <laughs> oh, geez. Um, no. Cesar Brion went 10. Uh... <laughs> And the referee stops yeah. the fight. I was sweating like heck. Oh my goodness. Are you wobbled? You're wobbled. I'm, I'm a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was Lee Savold. Ah, very good. It was, it was the fight just before he got knocked out by uh, Rocky Marciano. Very good. Very Listen. challenging. Yes. Well, thanks a lot for participating. Well, we were sweating there, as you can tell. Uh, you did a great job, Lee. You did a great job, Lee. Thank you so and much. very good luck with this amazing book. Um, I hope it does well for you. I hope it does, too. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for the time. Thank no you problem. for the privilege. Cheers. All the best. All right. Ringside Rapid Fire is brought to you by LostLegendsTV.com, the place where lost legends live.